Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Set build we have a very special guide. We'll be revisiting Scylla but as a heavy armor and also tower shield full tank build. And amusingly enough we'll still be able to get very high armor class even without having to rely on the classic pajama tank so no armor. For that true holy protector feel which I think really fits Scylla. After all her portrait depicts her as a warrior lady with very big armor and shield. So I didn't really want to make her into an unarmored tank, but I'll still give you some guidance if you prefer to go that path. And speaking about very high AC, during combat you can actually achieve way higher than that. We have 114 armor class with Scylla, despite being an armored character. And I know some will say, oh, but some buffs there are from party members and so on. Well, yes, I mean, Pathfinder is a party-based game at its core. Plus, I assume that if you're looking for a Scylla build, you aren't exactly planning on soloing the game with her, so you will have allies to further empower her own abilities. And of course, it doesn't need any saying, this Scylla will also be quite competent at melee eventually. So let's get into our heavy armor and shield, Scylla tank build. Alright, so this build can go two different ways. My preferred choice is to keep Scylla as a full armored tank, which fits her a lot more. On the other hand, if you want her to go unarmored, which can result in very high AC too, even higher usually, you would want to first multiclass her with Monk and Scaled Fist, then get Crane Style and later Crane Wing. As for the third level, to add double your Charisma modifier to Armor class, Oracle, Plague, and for the Revelation, pick the Nature Mystery, so you can get Nature's Whispers. The rest of the build would be similar to what I'll be doing now, starting with the Witch level. So for the full Armor Tank build, for level 2 we want to go with Witch. I realize lore-wise Witch also doesn't fit Scylla as much, although it's not exactly an evil class, you can be a Witch with a good aligned patron like Ember. In any case, we really need Witch to increase Scylla's AC to the max, especially early game. And the way to go is Stigmatize, the same archetype as Ember, as this is the Witch that can cast from Charisma. For your skill points, thankfully Witch will make use magic device into a class skill, which is perfect, so that Scylla can not only tank, but also provide very needed support to great divine buffs and also grant her even more AC through some spells from other classes like Wizard, so be sure to max it out. You need at least 3 points in mobility so that whenever you fight defensively you get more AC. Besides that, you can go with anything else you want. I'll just be picking Persuasion because it fits Scylla, but if you have another party member that can cover it, just ignore it, and go with, let's say, Lore Religion, which has synergy with a certain scimitar you can pick later on. Even Trickery and Stealth because Scylla... <laughs> As a matter of fact, does have the pickpocket background, it's part of her character lore. For the familiar, this is very important, be sure to pick Lizard. Lizard will provide a stacking boost to your armor class, so that's a plus one right at level 2. Speaking about armor class, the Ice Plant Hex is the way to go, so now we have yet another stacking bonus to armor class, this time a plus 2. So we have plus 3 to Scylla's AC just at level 2, and this will work with or without armor and shields. Also, even at the very start of chapter 1, you'll be able to get a ring that will increase this bonus by yet another stacking plus 2. For the curse, just go with Plague, it's the least offensive one. It doesn't really do anything special, but at least the penalty is also nothing. For your witch spells, just go with Mage Armor and Cure Light Wounds. You won't get more witch levels, it's just for the armor class. And these are the most useful ones of them all, even at the late game. For level 3, this is when I would resume progression into Paladin, until we get at the very least Mark of Justice, which is the ultimate Paladin ability of them all. For level 3, as we'll be going with armor, armor focus into heavy armor, so now we have a plus 1 to our AC. At level 4, be sure to increase Charisma, which is also what you want to increase on all of the other levels, no matter the Scylla path unarmored or armor tank. For the first mercy, fatigue is the way to go. For level 5 you have two choices. Outflank this early only if you have other characters that can already get it at this point. I want to grab even more AC now, so I'll be going with tower shield proficiency. They do have a penalty to attack rolls, but it won't matter much for this build, especially considering Scylla's might evil and also outflank, which we'll be getting soon enough. We also get paladin spells at this level, be sure to always have Veil of Heaven on, 
because it means a plus 2 sacred bonus to AC against demons, very rare. At level 6 we can choose between Divine Bond or Animal Companion. I still think that even for a Scylla tank, the Animal Companion and the Horse is the way to go. Divine Bond isn't quite as useful, especially after the nerf to Elemental Barrage, not working on melee hits. Regardless of your Scylla riding her horse or not, the horse is... well, it provides an extra body so can also tank for you. The more characters that can absorb hits, the better. It has 3 attacks per round, even higher when buffed with other stuff like haste. Synergy with teamwork feats, honestly, it's just far more efficient than Divine Weapon Bond. And ideally, you don't want to ride the horse with Dispute, because you want the enemies to focus on Scylla, so the horse will be more of an off-tank. At level 7, Outflank is the way to go, as I want Dispute to not only have very high armor class, but also decent melee capabilities. For another Mercy, Diseased. At level 8, you get level 2 Paladin spells. Always cast 1 Aura of Greater Courage to grant immunity to fear to all your party members, and then bestow grace to highly increase the saving throws of any good aligned character, including Scylla herself. For level 9, improved critical and you have two options. Honestly, scimitars are the best choice overall because they have higher critical range. And critical hits have amazing synergy with outflank. But because I want this build to be more thematic, I'll be going with long swords, which fits Scylla a lot more. For level 10, confused as a mercy. For level 11, improved initiative. Scylla doesn't have high initiative until later, and you don't want her to be caught flat-footed because that will reduce her armor class for the first round of combat. Now for level 13, because we already got the highly useful Mark of Justice at level 12, I would rather multi-class now and resume Paladin progression later, as almost everything we could want from Paladin, well, we already have it, besides level 4 spells. I have chosen to go with Fighter and Mutation Warrior. We'll get some bonus feats, which we do need, plus the Mutagen is amazing and will even serve as a way of increasing Scylla's armor class, attack rolls and damage too. Of course, I suppose, if you just wanted the Mutagen, you could go for Alchemist and Vivisectionist, it just doesn't really fit Scylla. And I wanted this build to be as thematic as possible outside of the Witch Tip. It is true that Mutation Warrior won't get the armor training ability, which is kinda sad for a tank, but the other bonuses more than make up for it. Just the Mutagen alone is amazing. You can put the extra skill point anywhere, like Athletics. For level 13, Boom Companion so that our horse can scale decently to our level. It should end up at around level 18 or 19, even with multiclassing. Then as a bonus feat, Weapon Focus, and either Long Sword or Scimitars. Now keep increasing Mutation Warrior levels until at the very least 3 for the Mutagen. For level 14, Dazzling Display. Then at 15, Shatter defenses at last, just in time for almost all of my other builds to highly increase the chances of Scylla hitting the enemy, even with some debuffs to her attack rolls from the tanking feats and abilities. I would now keep progression into Mutation Warrior until 5. This way we can get weapon training, weapon specialization, and another very useful ability for tanking I'll soon show you. So for level 16, weapon specialization, long sword or scimitar. For 17, Advanced Weapon Training, Fighter Statics. This way, we'll soon be able to get the Shield Wall ability to work, regardless of allies having it or not. And essentially, it's a plus 2 to Scylla's AC. You do need to have at least one other ally with a shield, which can work for, let's say, Social. And then Weapon Training into Heavy Blades, both Scimitars and Long Swords are part of this weapon group. Now I would resume progression into Paladin, for another Mercy, Cursed. For level 19, Shield Wall at last. And we'll also be getting Paladin level 4 spells. The best ones being Eagle Soul and Holy Sword. Now, for the last level, you have two options. You can go for Ranger and Demon Slayer, which is quite fitting for Scylla too. For the plus 2 bonus to damage and attack rolls against demons. Or just keep progression into Paladin, which at the very least will grant your horse an extra level. So it's the one I prefer going for. Another level 4 spell slot too. Alright, now let us give a Mythic progression for our full armor tank, Scylla. For Mythic 1, any tank character definitely wants Last Stand. It's not only one of the best Mythic abilities regardless if you want to tank or not, but for tanking it's the ultimate one. Trust me, this really is a game changer. Most battles will be over in, well, at most 2 rounds, so that's exactly the time Last Stand will keep you alive. For Mythic 2, sadly, Mythic Shield Focus is rather poor, there's Mythic Dodge, but it's just a plus 1 to AC, I'd rather get something else now. In this case, 
extra mythic ability, and I'd say we have two options. Abundant casting is very useful, because paladins have amazing level 1, 2 and 3 spells. If you don't have any other character with it, go for Inspirational Leader instead. It is a great mythic ability, it's just that you only need a single party member with this. For mythic level 3, Ever Ready is the way to go regardless of long swords or scimitars, especially since we didn't really get the chance to pick combat reflexes during our feat progression. For mythic 4, the classic mythic critical into your weapon of choice. For mythic level 5, if you went with the horse pet, mythical beast can help, even if the horse won't be the main tank. But I want you to do something different and go for abundant smite now. It can prove quite useful, especially as we'll be getting more mythic ranks now. And well, the more smite, evil and mark of justice uses you have, the better for your whole party, especially Scylla, because it even enhances her own armor class. For mythic 6, mythic weapon specialization, your weapon of choice. For mythic level 7, well, this is when I would definitely go for mythical beast. The other ones we have left aren't that useful. Of course, archmage armor can be great if your Scylla went for the unarmored tank path. For mythic level 8, mythic initiative no doubt. Okay, so I realized I made a mistake here and picked archmage armor at 7. It was supposed to be mythical beast. But anyways, for this level anything goes. Improved abundant casting can grant her more spells of level 4. It's just that, since she cannot cast level 5 and 6 spells, it's a bit wasteful. As far as other potential tanking abilities like Rupture Restraints and Unstoppable, Scylla doesn't really need them because she can achieve extreme saving throws from her High Charisma and the Bestow Grace Paladin spell. I'll just be picking always a chance here. For Mythic 10, you can also pick anything you want, but at this point I would go for Mythic Dodge. I mean, it's just a plus one, but why not? We already got the best abilities anyways. Alright, now let's cover gear for our full armor tank, Scylla. For the amulet, I went with combat awareness for the bonus to initiative. However, you can also go for voracious spirit, which can give you stacking bonuses to armor class until the next rest. Perfect for the end game. For armor full plates and later mithril full plates are the way to go to increase your AC to the max. For shirts and robes, just the cloth of heavy fortification to grant Scylla some immunity to critical hits and sneak attack. For bells, at first bells that increase constitution if you want to fully focus on tanking, later constitution and strength, but ultimately all of the physical stats. But there is something to be said about the lizard tail, not just for polymorphed characters or animal companions, since you still get the very useful plus 8 circumstance bonus to AC for the first round of combat, and well, the first round is where most of the action happens anyways. This is actually without the belt, so we can go for definitely higher than 90 AC, even without short duration buffs, since this is pretty much permanent once per every battle. For gloves, if you want to focus on tanking, embroidered red gloves are the best later for the plus 3 luck bonus to AC. But since we also have 5 levels of mutation warrior, earlier you can go for gloves of dueling to increase your weapon training even further. For boots, regardless of an unarmored or full armor Scylla tank, Ronex Sacrifice will be the best. Even if you don't care for the dexterity boost, it will still provide even more stacking dodge bonuses from the haste spell, especially when you combine it with the similar capstone ability from Master's Called. For helmets, two choices. Shy Lily is my preferred choice because it also increases your strength, together with a plus two profane bonus to AC. I don't really consider this to be a main character tier item because, well, they can just get profane bonuses to their highest score through Nocticula's gift, which is why I left this for Scylla, or usually my pets. On the other hand, you can also go for the Helmet of Comradery, which can increase your AC further than this, equal to plus one morale, a very rare type of bonuses, for each ally close to you, to a maximum of plus three. For the glasses, definitely Broken Trickster, not just because it will increase both your wisdom and charisma, but the tanking property is absolutely amazing. Even on unfair, damage reduction is quite powerful, because the damage there is only multiplied after it's been shaved by damage reduction. For cloaks, you can go with cloaks of resistance that have the highest modifier. I just went with culture of violence here, because I have a scold, uh, but you can leave this cloak to any other character. For rings, icy protector is the must have. You can get it super early and it will increase your Ice Plant Hacks by an extra plus 2 stacking boost to AC. I also enjoy combining it with the Righteous Crusader Ring for an extra smite evil use per rest. 
The more smites we get, the higher AC too. The bracers are completely up to you. I have the Righteous Exorcist bracers here just because they are thematic, but they don't really matter past the very early game. Now let's get into weapons and quick slots for our tank Scylla. For the weapon, I decided to go with long swords as they are the ones that fit Scylla the best. But you can also go with scimitars. Radiance is the ultimate longsword. Well, it's not exactly the ultimate, but as far as being the holiest weapon of a paladin, this is what we get. You also have Balanced Defender, especially because you'll always be wielding a shield. And Iron Prayer for even higher damage against demons. Don't forget, no matter the weapon you settle for, you can always grant it a lot of extra properties from buffs and abilities. For shields, I decided to go with tower shields, they are the most massive of them all, of course. Unfortunately, there aren't really any special tower shields as far as passive abilities, so I just settled for the Shield of Chesties. At least it looks very cool for a holy warrior. As far as quick slots, the Lucky Dice to provide minor bonuses, the Old Grimoire, because as I said, Paladins have very useful level 1, 2 and 3 spells. Now, Arrodan's Wrath is the must-have Paladin quick slot item. First, it will change your Paladin's Smite Evil ability to grant a sacred boost to AC instead of deflection. Sacred bonuses are way better, because deflection, well, you can get it through other stuff like the Shield of Faith spell. Plus, it will even increase your first attack every round with an additional 1d4 points of divine damage. You can't really go wrong with it, since it's a permanent effect. Extend and Lesser Extend rods, which can help increase the duration of your Paladin buffs. And don't forget, since you have Use Magic Device, the most useful scrolls to provide support like Mass Heal. And Sea Mantle is quite the powerful option too, because it can increase your AC by a massive plus 8. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my full armor tank Scylla guide. If you want to see more different companion builds, please be sure to comment down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and even become a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.